What's up everyone, Ryan from Addicted to Nature, and today we're talking about microworms. They're one of the easiest ways of feeding your fish fry, your baby fish, and this includes species like bettas, tetras, zebrafish, and live bearers like the guppies you see here. In fact, I even feed these to my grown rummy nose tetras, and they just gobble them up. So let's get started, I'm going to talk a little bit about them, and then we're going to make a new culture together. First, let me show you what they look like. I have two species of these nematodes here, the microworm and the banana worm. The great thing about filming in a fish room is that I have really good lighting, so here's a close-up look. Now, each of these cultures lasts me about a month of constant use, meaning I feed my fish every day and they can keep up with this harvest schedule. I found that each of these cups can regenerate the worms you see on the sides in about two to five hours so you can do multiple feedings in a day if needed. So what's the difference between the two types of worms? Sources online say that the microworm is the bigger of the two, but personally I don't see much of a difference. The fry will happily eat both. What is really different though is the time it takes for a new culture to establish itself and start producing worms. The microworm on the left takes five to six days to start producing, while a new banana worm culture can yield results in as little as two to three days. The temperature and the composition of your media can also drastically affect these times though, with low temperatures being a little bit slower in producing new worms for either of these two species here. So why choose these over baby brine shrimp or something else? Well. All you really need is a cup, a starter culture, and media to essentially have an infinite supply of food. No mixing salt and water for new cultures every few days, no need for a loud bubbler or fancy contraption to separate the egg husks. To feed your fish, simply scrape the sides of the cup with a finger, or for the less daring, a stick, and just swish it into the water. The microworms can survive in the tank for days, so there's no need to siphon out leftover dead food like with baby brine shrimp. I will say though, if you're raising tiny fish fry like bettas or tetras, it's a good idea to feed them powder foods such as boiled egg yolk or infusoria for the first week or two, and then you can feed the microworms and the microworms that aren't eaten during the first feeding can remain in the tank for the fish fry to forage. Now let's get into making these cultures. We're gonna start with a clean plastic cup. You want to pick a tall cup with a lid so the worms have a nice area to crawl up and out of the media for you to harvest later. This area needs to be at least three inches or roughly eight centimeters. The lid also needs to contain a hole for gas exchange and since I'm using a coffee cup lid, um, the hole is already there. The next part is the most important part, the media. Some people use instant mashed potato mix, but from my dart frog keeping days, I've found and stayed with this. Now this video isn't sponsored by Josh's Frogs, but this mix has given me the best results. It contains a mold inhibitor as well as antibacterial ingredients so that your cultures won't smell or mold over, which are both common problems with microworm cultures. And since we're only feeding one type of food, we want the most nutritious food for our fry. Now the powder mix comes with added vitamins and as the worms eat the medium, they will become quote unquote gut loaded with these nutrients, which is then absorbed by the fry when we feed the fish. You wanna make sure you are ordering the Melanogaster fruit fly media, since there are a few options available online and as of this video's release, it's about 15 to $20 for a three pound bag, which will last you basically until the end of time. Now the instructions here are for fruit fly culturing, so we're going to have to adapt it to our needs. Instead of using three quarters water to one half cup of media, which is essentially saying three parts water to two parts media, we're going to be using about five parts water to two parts media. I've been using the media since high school, so I'm just going to eyeball the ratios here, but I will teach you a trick that will help you get it right every single time. I begin by adding a spoonful or two of the powder mix and then adding in the boiling water. Now the water has to be boiling since boiling water will activate the mold inhibitors in the media. We only need a little bit of powder since the worms only live on the surface of the media. And this is non-toxic, so don't be scared. Stir it up a little bit and then take care not to burn yourself. Here 
Here's where the trick comes in. As you're stirring, the mix will get thicker and thicker. So once you feel some resistance, that is the ideal density of media when it's hot. So keep stirring for about 20 more seconds, and if it gets much thicker or even clumpy, add a bit of water. As the media cools, this will start to set. So we want to make it a little bit thinner than we really want it to be. You can add more powder or water depending on how it feels to you. So once the new media has cooled, we can inoculate or seed the cups with worms from our old cultures. This part, it's very important to be clean and as sterile as you can because if you have both microworms and banana worms, you don't want to be cross-contaminating and mixing your two types of cultures. I recommend using separate and clean Q-tips for each species, as well as washing your hands with warm soapy water in between. So just take your Q-tip and you're going to dip it in through the walls, just like you're sort of feeding your fish, and then take that Q-tip and mix it into the new culture. You don't have to add a bunch of worms. You do want to try to avoid getting as much of the old media as you can. So I'll do this for my other culture, making sure once again not to add any old media, and then I'll lid the cultures. I'll store this at room temperature from 75 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 to 27 degrees Celsius, and if I've done everything correctly, I'll start to see new growth in a couple of days. Now, once again, this culture will last you about a month, and if you do notice a lot of mold or you know, a lot of stinky stuff coming out of it, I would just remake the culture. The microworms and the banana worms are pretty hardy, so you don't have to worry too much about them dying. As you can see, there are some bits of mold on the walls, which is why I decided to make a new culture today. So thank you guys all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.